Oh, source. All right, we will now have our second press conference with the uh, Tennessee Volunteers. Joining us is head coach Josh Heupel and three of our student athletes. So we'll have opening remarks by Coach Heupel to be followed by questions. Coach? Yeah, just uh, first, uh, I've said it during the course of the week, but, but thank you to uh, everybody involved um, with uh, this entire setup. Uh, the Orange Bowl Committee, um, South Florida, uh, the hospitality has been second to none. Uh, uh, this has been a special game for me uh, in my past and uh, have always been treated the right way here in uh, a fantastic week uh, for our staff and for our players. Great experiences for them, and obviously it culminates tonight uh, with a great win for us. Uh, thank you to Vol Nation for showing up and the way that they did. Uh, fun to see uh, them flying from all across the country and uh, come and, and, uh, and help us go compete tonight. I, I appreciate everything that they've done, not just tonight, but our, on our entire journey uh, this season. It was awesome and fun to see so many VFLs, former players, show up throughout the course of the week. You know, four days prior to game day, uh, they already started showing up in droves uh, out at practice. Uh, around the hotel. It's great to get an opportunity to, to connect with you guys. Uh, you guys have built an unbelievable legacy here, and it's something that we're continuing to strive to, to go chase and, and, and uh, embrace every single day. So thank you for, uh, for the legacy that you've left. Uh, all season long, uh, we've talked about learning how to compete and finish at the end. Uh, this month, uh, the message was really consistent with that as well. It was about finishing our season. Uh, finishing this legacy and for the guys that have been here the last two years or whenever they came in. Uh, I'm not sure a group uh, has done more in a shorter amount of time uh, to help uh, revive uh, a prominent program the way that this group has. So proud of the, the players and the staff, the connection that we have, uh, being accountable to one another, loving to compete and doing it together every single day. Uh, tonight was, uh, was a lot of fun, uh, an unbelievable defensive performance. Special teams were rock solid, and, and uh, Joe and offensively found a way uh, to make a bunch of big plays and, and get the ball to the end zone. Uh, great night for Tennessee. The best is yet to come, um, but uh, really excited about what happened tonight. All right, we're going to open it up to questions. Again, our etiquette for questions is please raise your hand. A microphone will be brought to you. Uh, please state your name and your affiliation and ask the question and name to whom you would like the question to be answered. We'll begin down front. Glenn Sattel with Saturday Down South. Uh, <clears throat> Coach, what do you say to people who insist still that bowl games don't matter? And what was the significance of the win tonight? Man, bowl games matter. Um, you watch them uh, every single day. You can see the energy, effort, and strain, the excitement, um, the disappointment on the other side. Um, they matter, and, and uh, it doesn't mean that everybody has everybody <laughs> uh, for the ball game. Uh, that's just the nature of, of where we're at uh, during the course of ball season. Um, but it matters for everybody that shows up. It matters to the head coaches, the assistants. It matters to the fans. It matters to the players. These guys are prideful. Uh, Clemson's prideful. Um, when you line up and compete, man, you're going to compete with everything that you got. And uh, these are rare opportunities. I, I just, you know, 21 years ago, whatever it was, um, I got an opportunity to play here inside of this stadium and the memories that, that I have uh, from that. I, I don't talk about my playing days a lot with these guys. Um, I'm old enough that uh, some of them weren't even alive. Uh, but they, uh, I think they bought into that, that these moments matter, and it's something that they will remember uh, for the rest of their, their lives. Yeah, it continues to, to put our brand, um, the style of football, and, um, you know, the, it's a legacy moment for the guys that are here that are graduating, um, but it's a springboard for us moving forward. <clears throat> Again, our brand is out in front of everybody. I think we've beaten three out of the last four national champions uh, during the course of this season. Um, you know, 11 win season, which hasn't been done since 2001. Um, there's so many positive things, so, many, so much momentum inside of our program um, that the entire country, uh, our players, our fan base, recruits, can see the trajectory of, of where Tennessee is and where it's going. And uh, um, tonight's a big night. Joe, I've got two questions. One, first one for Joe, Austin Price, Fall Quest. Um, you're such a cool, calm guy, and, and you know, 
it doesn't ever seem like anything rattles you. Um, tonight, you kind of had it all on display. You had the touch ball to Ramel late, and then a couple of seeds that you threw for some scores. What were the emotions like for you when when you're making those passes? Um, <clears throat> uh, pretty much got to stay um, calm. You know, that play is going to happen when it happens. Um, it's going to happen. So uh, when you come to the sideline, you just pretty much got to, you know, uh, stay equal headed. Um, you know, the next play got to happen. Uh, you have to move on to the next play. The last play, you can't go back and change it after it's done. So uh, after those couple of footballs that was thrown down the field, um, I was pretty much just humble, you know, as, as I always am. And just pretty much just, I mean, I smile a couple of times, but it's fine. And then Aaron, for you, uh, big game tonight, had a couple sacks in the first half, several tackles for loss. Talk about your kind of growth as a player as you continue to hone your uh, craft at linebacker? Yeah, just um, buying into the coaches, uh, listening to the coaches. Um, you know what I'm saying? Loving on the teammates. My teammates pushed me, bro. I couldn't do it, you know, without my, my D-line and my back end. So, you know, man, just shouts out to them. Shouts out to the coaches. You know, they, they keep me going. This question is for Joe Milton. <coughs> Joe, you coming from Pahokee, Florida, representing South Florida here tonight at the Orange Bowl and being the MVP, how does it feel doing it right in your own backyard? Um, it feels great. Um, I pretty much been talking about it for the whole month. Um, ever since we figured out that we was coming down here, um, it was a statement game for Tennessee as a team, and also a statement game for me um, for playing home. Yeah. Adam Sparks, Knox News. Uh, for Josh, right here in front. Um, Joe was sort of filling in for Hendon, Squirrel for Jalen. Uh, to some extent, Aaron was making plays maybe that Jeremy would make during the year. You, can, you have three guys here that all step forward. What's the philosophy that you have that where you can plug and play and still stay at this elite level? Uh, next man up. Uh, you can phrase it however you want to. That's not coach speak. We talk about it. We live it every day. Um, we talk about competing the right way and, and preparing for your opportunity. Uh, you don't know when it's coming. We've got young guys that continue to get better. Uh, I, I think the fact that our guys love being in the building, they love learning and growing, and they enjoy who they're doing it with, allows us to continue to take strides individually and then, then collectively as, as a football team. And, and uh, man, like where we started and where we are now on that in that way is, is so different. And <clears throat> we've got good young players. Um, we're losing some, some really good veteran guys, uh, obviously. Um, but the future is... Freaky bright uh, for Tennessee football. Uh, George from the Athletic. Actually, for Josh and Joe. Joe, it looked like you were looking for Hendon there on the stage, and, and then he gets up there and kind of shares that moment with you. I know some of this process, he's been zooming in meetings. Uh, Joey was just talking to the locker room how you guys did the call sheet together. What, what's this been like, this leading into this bowl game, sharing this with, with him? And then again, for both of you, on just kind of his presence still as part of this team, even while he's been hurt. You got it, because I, I kind of checked out. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I thought it was to you. Okay, um, You're going to have to repeat the question. No, nah, no, nah, you good, you good. Um, for me, um, you, know, um, you know, me and Hendon live together um, for this whole semester of school. So, you know, just watching films together every day. <coughs> just enjoy these moments that we have. Um, you know, any play can be your last. So we pretty much just, every time we go home, pretty much just talk the game plan out. And after we talk it out, uh, he'll come back to my room probably at like one o'clock and saying something like, "Oh, I don't really like that read, Jojo. Uh, how you feel about it?" And you know, we'll talk about it. I don't matter what time it is. I mean, we'll get up in the morning for meetings. So um, you, you know, guys said you're in bed at 10:30 every night, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, we gotta get that work. Okay. That was right there, pay off. Uh, but you know, other than that, man, it just felt special. Um, you know, having him up there. You know, he put in a lot of work for this. Um, I mean, if you want to be truthful, he got us here. So um, I had to get it done for him. Josh Vince Farrar, 99.1, the sports animal. Can you talk about why your defense was so effective tonight and what some of the game plan was that you executed? Man, obviously, there was a ton of pressure, multiple in our fronts. Um, thought we did a good job against the run game. End of the first half, got a little bit tired. They hit, they hit some on us, um, you know, a little bit in the third quarter. Um, but. Uh, multiple coverages on the on the back end, and and we played better gap integrity. We tackled better in space, and we were better in our coverage. Not perfect, um, obviously. The PIs were 
were disappointing uh, on our part, but um, continued to, to fight and compete. And great red zone defense, uh, situational football tonight. Um, you got to get points when you're in the red zone. Um, you need to get sevens. And, and uh, defensively, we found a way to, to tighten up when they are on the plus side of the 50 and, and uh, holding the field goals. They didn't make many of their attempts and uh, find a way to get off the field. Created turnovers, too. <coughs> Samantha Castano with Local 3 in Chattanooga. This one is for Coach Heupel. Kind of going off of that, the Tigers were held without a touchdown for just the second time this season in the first half. A l obviously, a lot has been made about Clemson's top-notch defense. Do you think people kind of counted you guys out in that way? I think our, our, our defensive players continue to grow. Um, you know, we had guys that uh, were playing in the middle part of our defense, uh, more reps than they had been during the course of the season. It's a prideful group. We continue to get better. Um, you know, there's some youth back there. <clears throat> the fact that we were, um, we had more health in the secondary with more opportunities to practice allowed those guys to go out and play um, in, in a better way. Uh, throughout the course of the season, training camp, last spring, uh, just those guys didn't, they missed a lot of opportunities to improve and, and uh, thought they got better during the course of this last month after uh, the re end of the regular season. Reese Van Hatton, WATE TV in Knoxville. Squirrel, I'm not going to let you get off easy on this one. Uh, when you found out Jalen and Cedric weren't going to be playing in this game, how did you embrace stepping up and taking on a larger role? Uh, yeah, um, I just went, like, I went to um, Brew, Ramil, and just, like, stayed in the building extra and just worked on my game and stuff, extra film, and I knew I had to um, step up and stuff. West Lamb at WorldWideWest.com. Squirrel back to back for you here. Um, um, overall, just to touch upon that, can you just talk about the receiving core, just the talent of it overall, and in your opinion, what stands out to the receiving core of this team? Oh uh, yeah, I feel like we're the best. Um, like all of us come um, to work every day, and we just ball out and stuff. I have a question here. Hey, Josh, uh, on, on the field afterwards, I heard you say the best is yet to come. That, that seems to be a mentality you've had throughout your tenure here. Um, how often do you preach that to the guys in the room, and, and where do you think that comes from for, for you? Well, I just I know that, you know, where we started, where we've gotten to, but there's so much left out there uh, for us. And, you know, that's an individual habits. It's, um, you know, us continuing to improve it in communication as coaches. Um, refining what we're doing inside of our building uh, as we continue to develop depth inside of our program, uh, recruit. Um, you know, one of the great lessons I said this to the football team after uh, after the game tonight is, you know, two years ago there was so much outside noise that wasn't necessarily positive, and none of those guys paid attention to it. They decided collectively and individually to to go accomplish some, something, and they worked for it. And if you set your mind to something and you work, you really can go up about accomplish anything. And, and uh, that's a great lesson for this football program, but it's a great lesson for these guys as they move into life. And, and uh, as we continue to move forward, everybody inside that locker room understands there's a whole lot left out there for us that we can improve upon, that we control, that can help us continue to climb as a program. All right, Josh, I'll throw it back at you. The previous question is, uh, uh, Hendon Hooker and just zooming in for meetings as he's out, you know, he has his knee looked at and just being a presence here. What does that mean? What has just he meant in the last two years? <clears throat> well, the fact that he's committed to this program and to his teammates, to Joe in some ways, that he wants to be a part of this experience, that he wants to finish his legacy here the right way. Um, I think it speaks to everything of, of who he is. And this program has climbed, and this is not taken away from anybody else inside of the building, me included. All right, this doesn't happen with, without Hendon. And I say that meaning that, and these guys would say it too, like he's, he's special. As you build a program, you gotta have somebody that's selling your message from inside that lives that message every day and gets, gets the locker room headed in the right direction. And, Hennon wasn't the only guy that did that, but he sh certainly was spearheading it. And there were a lot of guys that, that started moving us in the right direction from, uh, from the inside out.
Josh Austin with VolQuest, when you describe it as freaky bright a few minutes ago, what 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 does that look like to you? I mean, you had those freshmen, whether it be Squirrel or Josh Josephs, Elijah Harris, <coughs> play a lot more reps and snaps tonight. Um, and then, of course, you had all these newcomers come in here. So what's what's that that future look like in your mind? Yeah, playing electric football on the offensive side of the, the football field, scoring a bunch of points defensively, being aggressive, fearless. Um, you know, ferocious and being the best defense in the country and having that same mentality on special teams. Like, we're just getting started in in uh, in what we're developing here. And, and uh, you know, I love coming to work with these guys every single day. As so we continue to recruit, man, our brand tonight, our brand is in front of everybody again on a national stage. It was a primetime game, and they got a chance to see who we are, how we play, how we compete together, the connection, the energy. And, uh, man, I think... Uh, Someone wants to play an exciting brand of football and have more fun uh, than they can imagine. Man, it's a great place to uh, to come compete uh, on Rocky Top and, and an unbelievable fan base. Uh, uh, Noah Taylor, Rivals.com. Squirrel, this is for you. I, you know, I talked to Joe the other day. He said that you guys kind of developed a relationship when you first arrived, and he just really trusts throwing it to you down there. I mean, how much is, has he kind of helped in your development over the last year? Uh, yeah. Um... Yeah, when I first got here, like, I was rolling with um, the twos and stuff. And, like, Joe would be my quarterback. And, like, like he would just, like, hit me and stuff and strive and stuff. And just found, like, a Was the ball coming hard, squirrel? <laughs> yeah, it was, actually. <laughs> yeah, actually knocked me off my feet. For real. But, yeah. Uh, Josh, you mentioned that you had a – Last Rucker with 24-7. Question for Aaron. What, what was different defensively for y'all until Clemson got to scoring range and once got, Clemson got to scoring range? It just looked like two different defenses in some way. So like when it got in the red zone and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like, um, I don't know, I just feel like we, uh, we just play better when the pressure's on and they're about to score. We don't, we don't want them to score. So I feel like, you know, um, that played a part in our, in our schemes and stuff like that. So, yeah. Squirrel, back to you again. Uh, not, uh, kind of a funny one. W-A-T-E, Reese Van Hampton. But uh, have you realized how much, back here, sorry. Uh, have you realized that your name is buzzing on social media because your name is Squirrel? Uh, yeah. You looked it up already? No, 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 no. Oh, you should Google or Twitter you search your name. <laughs> Joe, you said that this was a statement game for you. What kind of statement do you feel like you've made? Vols back on top. What's up? It's a good statement. Josh, what do the next few weeks look like for you? Obviously, after the season's over, a lot of changes. You got hires to do, rosters, who's coming back, all that kind of stuff. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, I was going to try to enjoy this one. Thanks for ruining it. <laughs> really? Jeez. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy a couple days with my family while I push forward on some of the problems that uh, are the issues that uh, that you already talked about. Uh, we got recruiting uh, fourth through the eighth, and we'll move forward on, on staff and, and all those things here as the beginning of, of January unfolds. Brian Armstrong, News 12 Chattanooga. You said, this is for Josh, you said that getting back in the rhythm of calling plays wasn't going to be an issue. Was it? No. Um, First of all, we got a great staff. Joey Halsley d does a fantastic job. Glenn Ellerby does a fantastic job. Those guys have been with us forever. Um, so um, tonight, uh, we probably weren't great balance early on, but some of that was what they were doing um, on the defense side of the football. So. Do we have any other questions? We have one in the front. This question is for Coach Josh Hogan. Let's talk about some of the greatest memories that you have from this season, because there are a lot of them. Yeah, um, man, uh, you think back uh, about this season with this group of guys, uh, finishing it the way that we did here uh, will certainly be a, a great memory. 
Um, you know, some of the huge wins during the course of the season uh, inside of Neyland Stadium, Alabama, Florida. Um, as much as anything, though, uh, you, you really do remember just the, the daily interaction and, and the journey that you're, that you're, you're on with these guys um, every single day in the meeting rooms, uh, out on the practice field, um, eating dinner with these guys. Uh, the further you, I talk to them about, a lot about it, and I say that because of my playing days, Rand, when I look back on those days, like, it's not just the playing that you remember. A lot of it's just the small interaction, the moments uh, that you get a chance to, to hang out with your brothers. And uh, it's a, a, been a, a really special journey here with these guys this year. Well, that's going to conclude our press conference. We want to thank Coach Heupel and our student athletes, uh, Aaron, Squirrel, and Joe, for joining us. Thank you for representing the Southeastern Conference and Tennessee University. We wish you the best in the off season, and thank you for joining us. Uh, let's go, boys. Let's go. Thank y'all.